What's going on guys and welcome back to another satisfactory video where hopefully you're having a good morning, afternoon or evening and today is the start of the brand new project. So as you know in this building right here we are making the quartz, the silica, the crystal oscillators and the radio control units. And then in this building, we're making all of our beautiful bottled water, where we actually distribute all the water from this plant, bottle it up and send it to other factories. But also, I still get asked, even if in every YouTube video I put out, I got on Satisfactory, is why do you bottle it? Why not just get a water extractor and put it into a pipe and into a machine? And honestly, it's too easy. I've done it over and over again. I've said this over and over again, but I've still got to make sure that you guys understand why. And so most of the questions that are popping up right now is why not just put it into a fluid tree? Well, to be honest, if you package it, you can actually send double the amount that you can with a fluid train. And come on, it's a little satisfying when you can package water, send it to somewhere, get it to unpackage, and then get it to be recycled by sending the empty canisters back to the origin where it got collected and reused again. And then once all that's done and fulfilled, it's just satisfactory. <laughs> That was a little cheesy, not gonna lie. And then of course, after we did that project, we worked on this building, which provides us with our aluminium sheets, our aluminium casings, some copper ingots and all that good stuff. So what is the next project? And our next project is to actually relieve some pressure off the train line. Because as you know, we have the train lines on the upper highway, which have many turns and junctions where trains might actually have to wait for other trains to bypass just due to congestion. And then because of that reason, we had to upgrade the highway to introduce an express route on the bottom tier of that highway. And the reason we had to introduce this was because we didn't want the trains that was going to vital infrastructure within our save, for example, the power building. The power building's gonna need bottled water and it needs water itself. And to do that, we, meet, we need to make sure that the water is being sent there at 100% efficiency and the throughput is as high as possible. And that can't really be done if there's many intersections that could possibly cause that train to stop for any certain reason. So the express route right now we have goes from this bottled water plant and then goes all the way over to the Spire Coast where it supplies the power plant. And obviously we need power to go throughout all of our world. And in a few episodes time, we might have to look back at this power station and possibly double its power production because the power plant we have here just off the Golden Coast is providing 69,000 megawatts. And as you know, I have plans to turn this into a full fledged plastic factory and yes if you heard me wrong at 69,000. so make sure i get it nice in the comment section and the next project we're about to start is going to be working towards drones and drones are going to help relieve pressure off the um logistic systems that we have because when it comes to nuclear power you better believe i'm going to be sending bottled water to that as well and as you know for those that know me i like to do things on a large scale which means we're going to need a surplus amount of bottled water and yes we're going to take it to the skies in fleets to get over there to make sure that it is efficient and runs a full efficiency but before we get to drones we've got a few little steps we need to do before that we need to make batteries which means we need to make plastic we need to grab sulfur we need to grab high speed connectors we need to make circuit boards and all this kind of good stuff so where all that begins is Caterium. And what I'm thinking is this area right here is we're going to turn into a Caterium plant and we're going to use some alternate recipes. So if I just build a little foundation out here, so I've got a little bit of a tabletop to play with. If we have a look into our uh, manufacturer, for example, we're going to need high... Oh, I actually need to extend this out a little bit more. If we have a look at our manufacturer, we can see to make high-speed connectors, we're going to need quick wire cable or circuit boards. Or the other alternate recipe is silicon high-speed connectors, which require quick wire, silica and circuit boards. What I don't want to use right now is silica. So we are going to go with this standard recipe, which requires quick wire at 210 per minute, 37.5 cables per minute and 3.7 circuit boards per minute. And for this, yes, we're going to need plastic and all this kind of good stuff, but we want to focus on quick wire. The reason we want to focus on quick wire, make a mass, uh, mass product of this is because high speed connectors are going to need it. And if we go out of this and then quickly put down an assembler, we're going to also need some circuit boards and circuit boards. If we scroll down, we have the alternate circuitarium circuit board, which is the one we're going to go for, which is this which requires 37.5 quick wire per minute and also 12.5 plastic per minute. 
and that's going to come out at 8.75 circuit boards per minute which will go to the high speed connectors so you must be wondering where we're going to get the plastic from well i've got an answer for you if we head over to the spire course and head to our power plant we know that my refineries in here are making heavy oil residue and resin as a byproduct the resin then comes out into the corridor and then goes into these refineries right here to make plastic and we don't just have one of these lines we actually have two so we need to get the plastic from this side and the opposite side over there and then put that onto a train and send it over to where the caterium plant's going to be and then the next thing you must be wondering is what caterium recipe i'm going to be using and if we scroll down we're actually going to be using the alternate fused quick wire which requires caterium ingots which is going to come from obviously the caterium ore uh, and then we have copper ingots. And you must be wondering, but where are you going to get all your copper from? Well, I've got an answer for that as well. Where if we head over to our aluminium plant and head over to the second floor in the building, we can see that we have a lot of refineries making copper ingots. But also, a lot of these copper lines are not being used right now because they're being sunk. Because if we know, like I said last time, if they get backed up, they'll block this whole factory up and everything will stop production. But we actually have six 750 lines in here of copper ingots, which I'm thinking is we utilize this side of the building and maybe uh, put an extension on here. So we have the copper ingots come from down there into a train station here and shipped over to the Golden Coast where the Caterium plant is going to be. But then on the live stream when we were trying to figure out what we wanted to do for this next episode, I thought, you know what? I think it's time we kind of finished off the highway as well because this highway is just, well, it's a dead end. And this needs to go all the way over to the starter base in the desert. To be more precise, this area right here, this train station is going to get ripped out. This whole starter factory is going to get removed because we have some mega projects that we want to do in this desert later down the line. But I'm going to keep my lips sealed for now. Uh, but if you know, you know. So we're going to connect this highway up here to the highway that's next to the aluminium plant. And we're going to take it through this oasis over here then past the swamp in this location because eventually this is where my big boy nuclear plant is going to be and then i'm going to get it going through this archway all the way to the end over here go around this corner which will then go to the aluminium plant but also if you're enjoying these videos remember to give me a big thumbs up subscribe if you're not subscribed and comment even if it's just a bloody emoji. But as you can see now, I have been a little bit busy right here and I've already put down the train stations uh, that are kind of like in the works. They might they might not be this many, they might not be this few. I don't know yet. I'm just kind of putting a rough number down. But as you can see, I've got one, two, three, four stations with a freight station of two. Uh, and then at the end is a train station with a six uh, freight carts to go onto it. And this one right here is going to be for the copper, which is going to come over from the aluminium plant. And then the other uh, the other four, sorry, is going to be from Caterium. And what I've been doing is I've been looking at the map and I've been looking at like, oh, we've got a Caterium node here. We've got a Caterium node there. So I'm thinking about getting one train to pick up that Caterium, that Caterium to bring it to this location. And then we're going to grab two from the Northern Forest, one from the Desert, one from the Titan uh, Forest, and then bring them all over. So we'll have two, uh, wait, well, technically we will have probably 10 trains of a size of three, one locomotive with two freight cars to bring in the Caterium from five separate locations um, and bringing them in here. And then obviously the uh, copper will get mixed with the Caterium once it's been produced into uh, Caterium ingots uh, to make the fuse quick wire. And that's where we kind of want to start off. But what I want to do now is I want to head over to the aluminium plant and start working out how we're going to ship or where, where we're going to put a train station at that place but you might be wondering why is there so many signals here and why is there so many train lines well originally i did have the train line going from this location here going to the end and then into the train station there but my problem with that well because of the amount of traffic that's up here and sometimes the trains actually stop in and they might get too close if there's a train already in heat in here and if we put down a locomotive and put that one there and then put a freight car two three four i have don't have any heavy modular frames but three four five six it's going to come to down here which means 
that if there any trains come in for that station and that station and there's one train waiting in well for to enter there that's going to back up that's going to back up which means that the trains are going to back up here which means back up that train line back up that train line and it might just knock onto effect where the trains might back up all the way out of here and stop any lines coming down this way so what i've done instead is i've made a little diversion line so i've got this little rail line here and i've took it from this little fork uh, and we've took this train to go on a separate rail so if it does back up and there's one train in there and there's another one waiting at least the train has enough room down here that's not going to affect these other ones and these other trains that are here, if one train is inside the station, another train has got this room here, so it doesn't back up and block any of these ones. So there's a bit of dead space for a train to queue. Right, so I'm back at the aluminium plant, and the first thing we want to do is extend this highway around the corner of the building. So what we're going to do is we're going to go onto this side, because I do get a few people still asking about the, the curves. Um, like, how do you do your curves? There's, there's multiple different ways, but for those... That don't know here's how i usually do my curves uh that might be a little bit too long is i just go into my uh architecture i grab myself a crosswalk crossing uh this is the long way there is a quicker way to do this and i can yeah i can go and make blueprints this is just how i do it so uh just that uh, if anyone's got any questions of why i do it this way and not do it an easier way or use any blueprints it's just muscle memory for me now this is why i do it this way so i put this onto this section here i place that on top i then get this uh, add another one on top, rotate it by one uh, degree, grab the uh, walk walkway and then put that to there, and then get, get another foundation. I can't even bloody speak English right now. Hello, bits. Hello. Uh, and then we put the uh, foundation into that location, delete these two, remove that one, and then add another one under there. So eventually, you can see that it slowly does that. The reason I do it this way, it's, it eliminates any form of clipping uh, that can be done through walls here. So right here, you can see it creates a small gap where with some other me methods of turning, this wall can sometimes clip through this wall and create like a jagged edge on either side. And it kind of comes through. And that's not my kind of thing. I'm not a big fan of that. This is the longest method to do. But once you get it down, you can start doing it super, super quick. And you can even put this in a blueprint if you want. And all that kind of stuff and then make it a lot easier for yourself but as you can tell once you get it down to a t you can just get this done a lot quicker um and all that kind of stuff and to be honest it's kind of super satisfying when you start picking it up with some speed and getting it done and then all you do is if you want to turn right you want to do it you want to build from the left hand side and if you want to turn left you want to build from the right hand side and then all we do is we grab that we bring that into here just like this extend them out and then all we need to do is extend that on there and then if we go into our blueprints as we know here's all the popcax blueprints the link is now in the description of the previous satisfactory video if you want all of these he has given me the go ahead to share them with you so the link is in the description of the last satisfactory video but for my highway we're going to go over here and highway support we're going to put this down so we know our turn is starting here so all I need to do is grab myself a blueprint, grab the highway support, place that down there, just like that. And I do love now how in update eight, we can actually highlight the whole blueprint and copy it. And we can also delete it as a whole and not individual parts, which is fantastic uh, addition with update eight. And then all I need to do here is just extend this highway, which all I need to do is just click control because it's not registered as a highway boom and then kind of do you as well and then this one i'm going to place in manually i'm just going to go here into the center and point that there and that should work should and then we just work on the corners and some people do wonder why i've not made a corner blueprint again i i don't use a lot of blueprints uh, I, like i said i've got to be honest with you i don't use a lot of blueprints um i kind of like to stay kind of base like vanilla when it comes to building i like to build something because it's more of a satisfaction thing for me is to build everything manually than using blueprints because i don't want things to get stale if that makes sense and then i'll just take this base road down here take it around there and then continue the highway as well and then we'll get something like this as you can tell i've extended a little bit around the corner not all the way around the corner but what i need to do now is i need to make sure that we keep the 
copper uh, station that's going to be here lined up with this platform. So I'm going to take this um, foundation out here and I want to make sure we can try to line it up with this. And as you can tell right now, there is a little bit of a lift right here and that's not a big issue. What the big issue is, is when a train track comes onto that, it can cause a little bit of problems. So, because more than likely what I'm going to do is, as you know, I use left-hand drive. Yes, left-hand drive. I can see the comments now going, oh, you're using the wrong side, you're driving on the wrong side. I'm British, okay? I say bottled water and you guys take the piss out of me, all right? But I'm going to be grabbing the train line and it's going to go around here and eventually it'll come onto that straight there. So I'm more than likely going to get the train to come in this general direction, do a right, maybe just before these lights here, turn into this location and then go into a train station right here. And then the exit for that will go into here and turn onto that corner, um, which is not ideal, to be honest. But to be honest, I'd rather have the, it turn into here than too close to this uh, intersection here where the train's going to be pulling out of there just like it is now. Um, so I'd, I'd rather not have it come out too close to that. So we're going to do that. So the, what I'm going to do to line this up here is we're going to bring this along here like this. To be honest, we won't even need to line it up, to be honest. Because it, it is kind of centered. It's like a you know a couple of inches. It won't really matter. But all we need to do is we just need to grab this and take that in there just like that to that highway. And we're going to kind of just fill in this gap here uh, just like this. And then we're going to figure out where we want to put a train station. So we want it coming towards us. So let's just kind of extend this out uh, this way. Also, these videos are now going to be a little bit more. How do I put it? Multiple ep episodes is going to be to one cooked meal, <laughs> if that makes sense. So you're going to see small bites of the normal episodes because I do live stream over on YouTube now as well as Twitch. And you guys can actually tune in and watch me build these live um, like some of you have already tuned in come and said hello so i appreciate every single one of you that have jumped in i told you i don't bite your head off and you guys are enjoying it it seems like because i i do random spoon stuff but yeah you guys seem to enjoy it so thank you so much for uh, tuning in and you guys are breaking records over there i didn't expect for you guys to hit an average views of like 100 over on youtube straight away so i appreciate every single one of these and uh thanks again uh what we want to do is we want to go into our where am i going trains that's what we need we want trains so a train station and i want it to come down here into this middle bit and we're gonna go one and we're gonna put in six freight platforms right so we want to aim that i'm gonna have to adjust this wall here so two oh i need huh i need to go and get some bloody things god damn it Okay, so after a little bit of a trip back to my uh, starter base, I should now be able to extend this. Three, four, come on, hello, five, six. And then we're going to need to make sure that there's a little bit of a bend here that we're going to need. And then we're going to pull that in. So what I want to do first is figure out, because this train needs to come out of here and connect to this side over here, right? So we're going to bust a hole... A hole? A hole? A hole? A hole? A little, 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 English, Betsy. <laughs> it's been a long day. I've just got off a seven hour stream and I'm instantly recording this for your faces over here. So hit the like button. Do it. Do it. <laughs> do it. But no, I really do appreciate all of you that are watching these uh, satisfactory videos uh, and allow me to do this uh, for you guys. So uh, I really do appreciate it. Um, so railway we're going to bring that over here i'm going to try to get this onto a 90 degree the best i can which is going to go to about there and then i'm going to place you here so it's going to be one two three and then we're going to go to roughly around there maybe a bit more central around there where then we're going to take this train line down because a little tip for you it's always better to make the straight before the bend never get the train line and then take it this way and then create a snap point to then take it down because the problem with that is you might end up with a wonky line. So what I need to do here is that we can see that's red. So I'm going to remove this again. I'm going to place this down here. I want to try and line it up correctly, which is around there, right? And then I'm going to place it because if I then place that there, sometimes if you don't align it up right, you can get a bit of a wonk on. Wonk. W-O-N-K. It's an English thing. But to be honest, that's pretty straight. And I'm going to go, is it? 
actually yeah no that's pretty straight so i'm actually going to be happy with that and go ahead with that but most of the time what you want to do especially when it comes to corners is really put the straight down before doing the bend then you, you won't have them accidental train wiggly wobblies and you're wondering why your trains bleed on it have its own earthquake when you're riding it so we're going to do that we're going to obviously remove hello we're going to remove these in here like this and then we're going to place these down like that get rid of them so we've now got a bit of a gap and then we're going to take this all the way around here and connect it up to our already established highway unfortunately though we can't take this curve all the way around this corner in one piece because it's one big corner and the the, the line will not reach that far so we're going to bring this as far as we can forward that's going to not go on to any form of diagonal piece here and then we're going to grab this we're going to take it roughly so it's not too close to the inside and too close to the outside which i would say around here is pretty good and then we can just connect that straight up to there like that and it should look pretty decent just like that 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 <laughs> and then we're going to bring in this train line here and connect that up to there as well right so i've gone ahead and i put down the other lines just to kind of get this done and i've kind of trimmed this i thought we might kind of maybe leave a gap i don't know how this is going to you know be finalized yet uh but i've gone and got ahead and called this copper export because we're going to be exporting the copper at the aluminium plant uh, and i've gone ahead and put the signals in as well um and i'm thinking more than likely i'm going to bring the uh, copper down in this area right here so i've already put the floor holes and we're going to bring that down into this location rip out these and then take them into into here so if i just quickly grab myself some lifts we're going to bring that down to there and then we're going to do that for the rest of them as well and there we go once we got them we're just going to bring in the lines so where's my train station so i need to bust open this and then i need to add in the storage containers make sure we've got it on the export and then connect these belts up and then we should have our copper being sent into the train station and then all we need to do is add a train line from here all the way over to the uh Caterian plant so we can start exporting that over there and then i want what i need to do is then start looking at optimizing um the route and making sure we've got the number of trains that we need to because as you know the rule of thumb is one carriage or one locomotive to four uh freight cars if you don't know anything about that i do have a train guide video uh, and a signal guide video and all that kind of stuff so i'll put a links for them in the description if you need to know about them um and path signals as well but i think it's time we actually got this highway and took it all the way around which is going to be a big job and it's going to take some time and i think i'm going to have to go and grab uh, a train line um, and all that kind of stuff and just remember if you want to see like obviously with these edited videos there's a lot cut out of it but if you go over to the the my youtube channel and click on the live tab them videos right there uh are actually me prepping this video you can actually see me like building all this when obviously i've just I could cut that out of the video but all that stuff you can see me build it all out you see me interacting with chat some shenanigans happens random laughing stuff uh, I, and i really do advise it if you do enjoy you know watching at a slower pace and all this kind of stuff because obviously these are, these videos are a lot faster and straight more to the point um but I highly do recommend that you, you check them videos out and I, I'm, I'm going to do my best because uh, I am, you know, I do do a lot of content and I will try my best to make sure there's timestamps in there so you guys can get directly to the answer that you need and I'll do the best if I can. If I if there's a video that's missing timestamp, just give me a nudge in the comments and I'll make sure I'll put it onto my to-do list. And there we bloody go. After seven hours doing this on the live stream, building this whole entire highway of, I don't know how you guys do it, you know, just watch watched me build this whole highway just <laughs> using the blueprints placing foundations and foundations it's not fully finished uh, and i will be doing that in the next live stream which will be tomorrow because this video is going to go out on the 22nd and i will be finishing off the details for example doing all of this um with the pillars and taking that all the way out hello where you going get down from there no so where i'm going to be placing these along here and then I'm going to be adding these in here. Uh, but yeah, you can catch all that on the live streams. I know I push the live streams a lot, but at the end of the day, it's, it answers so many people's questions. So like, uh, why you do this? And it's, it's a direct way, all that kind of stuff. Um, but yeah, if you've got any questions for me as well, put them in the comments. I will try to get round to them as best as I can. Um, but I, I'm a busy boy. Uh, but one thing I do want to explain to you, some guys, uh, some of you guys do ask, do you have a diagonal part of this blueprint and that is no i actually don't have a diagonal part of the blueprint so it, the blueprint is literally just the support beam it's literally a one one uh one length um highway piece and a three piece 
But I want to show you how I do uh, the diagonal pieces, just so you guys understand. Because a lot of you uh, I stopped trying to do the blueprint because you didn't know how to do it. So all you need to do is just use the same foundation that you do to go down with just i've got a two meter foundation here and this is one of the blueprints here right this is a blueprint of the um the support beam and at the bottom one where you level it out remember this foundation you place at the first is, is your base foundation uh this is where you're kind of making you know you're gonna be putting your blueprints on and then at the bottom of the ramp, you're going to put down another one. And then all you need to do to level them out is just get yourself a two meter foundation, uh, diagonal foundation, sorry, and just connect them up just like this. But then a lot of you are wondering how I do these diagonal railings. So I'm going to show you. All you do is you grab yourself a painted beam. You place it at the top like that. You'll notice it will go red elsewhere and all this kind of stuff. So you're going to put this on to free form. And then you're going to place it directly into the middle of the foundation. So we can see the line right there. And we're going to place it right there, just like that. We're going to grab ourselves a um, beam. I say a beam, a pillar, sorry. And we're just going to zoom that down, right? And then we're going to remove that pillar at uh, the beam. And then we're going to add that pillar right there. And then we're just going to take this all the way down here. But this is the one I think that confuses most people is how do I get the actual um railings on top of this and to do that it it took me i'm not gonna lie a few hours to figure out but all you do is let's just go back to the top up here and we're gonna place down the foundation that's here so this is a one foundation if you notice that is now the same height as the pillars and then we're gonna grab ourselves the two meter that we're going down with and we're gonna hook this up to this like this and then we're gonna zoop that down there like so and then as you know if you get yourself a railing and put it on a diagonal piece it then creates a diagonal downward railing and all we do is just zoop that all the way down remove this piece now and then what you'll notice is that is now on the diagonal rail uh, the pillars that go down yeah it come it comes up a little jaggy and all this kind of stuff but that's the way the cookie crumbles <laughs> but yeah that's how that's done the next step now is for me to decorate the highway, which I need to go all the way through here. This is the version two of the highway, by the way, where this is going to be a train line for the express routes and all that kind of good stuff. And then um, I want to start working on the Caterium production. Uh, and I need to start getting the miners and I'm going to go to the Titan Forest, the, all that kind of stuff and start taking them to train lines. So that's going to take time. But hopefully, guys, you're enjoying this content and again thank you so much for supporting me as a full-time content creator and allow me to do what i do and hopefully you have a fantastic rest of your evening morning or afternoon so keep smiling and i'll see you in another video